How's your numbers doing, buddy? Good. Too low? Yeah. What's a good number to see over there? One zero zero. You want to see one zero zero? Yeah. I don't think we're going to see one zero zero this year. Did you calibrate that thing before you started? Did you? I don't even know how, buddy. That's never been calibrated. Yeah. Never, 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 never. These look nice and green, though. Yep. What's the highest number you saw over there so far? Um, um, four zero. You saw a four zero? Yep. There's not a five. There's a five. There's a five and a one or something. But I don't think that thing's right. All it is is a, all it is is a little bit of a reference to if it's better or worse. One day we should read the book and learn how to calibrate that thing, buddy. Yeah, one day we should. There's a four and a one. like this kind of ground. We only get like eight acres of it. And then we get back out to where it's no good. I don't know what time evening starts. It's four, quarter to five. So maybe it's evening, I'm not sure. Uh, the whole crew is in the 9750. So the baby, Amy, Corey, they're in there harvesting some peas. I'm just wandering down to this little single axle. So as you got the outside rounds done, on the other side of those trees, there was some pretty, pretty green stuff. So that had to definitely go in the dryer, but uh, Oddly enough, when it all averaged out, it averaged out to be about 16.5. So under 16 is dry because we keep our grain so long. We're going to run 16.5 through the dryer. We're not going to put it even into the aeration bins we have. We're going to dry it. And we're going to stick it into our, I don't know, maybe 10,000 bushel bins, maybe 4,000s. I'm not too sure. The peas are not running that great, although this is 120 acres further out west. It definitely got more rain. Like, that's undeniable. So, it's running, I would say, 10 bushels better than at home. So, I think home's probably running between 20 and 30. I'm hoping it makes 25. Out here is running, I would say, 30, maybe a little bit better. I did think we were going to average close to 40 across the peas when I was swathing them. And then, of course, once you got into it, <clears throat> you... Uh, the hoppers tell a different story. So we will uh, we will know when we're done. I was, uh, <clears throat> Buddy was actually combining yesterday. So we did a little bit of stuff on uh, a little bit of video and whatever. And I was explaining that uh, <clears throat> our farm, while none of the soil is very good, it's quite different. You know, and I see, like, I missed this with the swather because I didn't want to smash into the rocks and the trees that were on the edge of the field. But, uh, you know, from the outside, it looked like lots of pods and everything. And uh, I guess it's just just not there. But, I mean, maybe it will be. I don't know. We got uh, maybe six, 600 bushels off already, and she's done, she's done very little of the field. So, anyways, but back to the soil. So none of our soil is very good but it is extremely different from the low spots, spots around the sloughs and the creeks and the 
well, lakes we call them, but they're just bigger sloughs. Uh, that, that soil is all really good and it's really productive. Then you come out, uh, we got some stuff on that half section that's actually pretty good, the north end of it. This, it's all a little bit light, a little bit white. Um, you can see. And then when you get, when you get home on that home, basically 400 acre piece, it's really white. So we never know what we what we average until we're done. That's, and then we know, and we know the average and we can go for more. So we still could average out maybe 30, maybe 30 this year. And that'll be okay as long as the pea price holds up. They don't cost much to see. The quality looks really good. And they're not, they're not dusty at all. They're not bleached. They don't have earth tag, none of that stuff. They do have a few like different colored peas in there, like purple and brown. And there's even some looks like smooth yellows. So I'm not sure. I think that's just from the, the seed getting polluted a little bit over the years. We've been using the same seed over and over again. So it might be time to either find a color sorter and run them through that. Try to get back to a more of a pure block. Or maybe just buy some new, maybe some smooth round seed. I normally like would say these don't produce as much, certainly not as much as like a commercial yellow. But they usually don't even produce as much as a green. But we're hearing all over from Dawson Creek to Spirit River to over east that guys are barely, they're barely cracking the 20 bushel market for peas. So maybe, maybe they're still yielding all right. Maybe they're still holding their own. <clears throat> so I just shelled those ones out while I was waiting for Corey to unload there. The ones that I picked from off the side. And they are, uh, they're really nice looking peas. So... It is possible, although I think probably unlikely, but possible that we do get a we do get a good a good price for them, that good grade. Those ones weren't uh, those ones weren't really hard on the teeth, so they wouldn't have been ready. And then quickly before I get going here, we always get this battle. Why don't you desiccate? Why do you swap? And actually, some people are quite critical of it. You know, the hashtag sell your swather movement. Hold on. Okay, got those out. Now I don't have any marbles in my mouth. Um, so that big hashtag sell your swather movement, of course, that was mostly around canola. But it was, uh, you know, it was kind of for all crops, right? They, they you know, a lot of folks, it, it, everything is always split, no matter what it is, no matter what topic it is. But there was a lot of, you know, there's agronomists and all sorts of things, field advisors, crop advisors that were like, no, you got to get out there and desiccate, speed up your harvest, blah, blah, blah. So that took off in the last five, 10 years, really, really big. But it became, it switched from being a tool in the toolbox to being something that people are just using now for convenience. So they're spraying too early, they're spraying too much. Uh, I mean, we heard guys spray up to three to four times last year, desiccating, trying to kill the crop so they would ripen up. And uh, we try not to do that. So we have a lot of customers that would prefer them not be desiccated and these people aren't they're not um environmentalists they're not organic they're not anything like that they're just realists and and i think i am too now and i'm, I'm actually gravitating probably more to the we shouldn't we shouldn't do this side than than even the neutral side for so long i i couldn't care less either way do what you want right and now i'm thinking on a year like this when it's to august 19th the peas are basically what they're 15 so what did I say? They were 16.5. Um, the weather doesn't look all that favorable. There's rain about every six days now. Of course, it didn't rain all summer, so now it's got to rain all fall. But, uh, you know, these peas, are they're drying down on their own. We did swath them, but even standing, they probably would have dried down on their own. Um, uh, and then, and then you, you don't have to use that chemical application or that chemical process to kill the plant and get it to dry down. Because no matter what side of the fence you're on, if you believe that it's so late in the season or so late in the crop stages in the life of the plant that it can't absorb it, this, that, and the next thing, whatever they try to sell you on, we should all be able to agree that it's it's not it's not a natural process. It is a chemical process, and it's probably not the best. So it, it might not be so super detrimental or, or, or harmful, but it's probably not the, the best way, and we should probably do better to limit our use of, of those of those processes, certainly those chemical processes. 
So that was a bit long-winded, but that's why we don't. We we have a very nice swather, 35-foot header, nice cab. Um, we can get a lot done. It only took me about seven hours, I think, to swath this whole field. Uh, and that, you know, that was that was peas. And then there was a lot of elk pressure in this field because it's so close to that slough over there. So there was lots of elk beds, elk tracks, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, all in all, that's why we do that. We choose to swath over desiccate. We run, run the risk of the wind blowing the swath away. We run the risk of the elk now rutting up the swaths and the birds and everything crapping all over it. And then also heavy rains will cause the crop to sprout right in the swath. And then your quality goes for naught. But it is a it is a risk that we're willing to to take. And over the last basically five to ten years, we've always been rewarded financially from buyers basically globally that uh, you know that that seek us out and, and look for certainly these green peas, anyways, and, and even even the other other commodities as well. Well, good evening. We are, uh, Dad had this apart today. Cleaned it all up. <laughs> claims he, claims it wasn't leaking when I, when I, uh, just ran it before supper there. But I don't know. Let's, let's be honest. It's probably leaking. Because we didn't change any parts. We just cleaned it. <laughs> so, I am, uh, I'm gonna go out right across the road here from the yard. And I'm going to swath a little bit of canola. So, it is kind of early. Blah, blah, blah. However, everybody else is swathing. And uh, I want to see if that thing leaks. So, I'm going to go do the outside rounds. Uh, we got uh, green pea harvest 2024. It's done. We're done. We just finished them. They ran about 20 bushels. I wouldn't say, if, if they made it any more than 20, it wouldn't have been much, 21, 22. So we're just going to call it a 20 bushel average. Um, definitely a little bit disappointing. I really, I really, when I swathed it, I thought it was going to make 40. I really did. Um, then when we got in the combine, this, this is a pull up. So then when I got in the combine and I started to make a few rounds, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be tough to make 30. Um, we did some outside rounds things were looking good and then as we got into the middle of the field it just played right out so it's unfortunate but that's what it is we don't uh, we don't get to always get the big big crops so now I'm just trying to figure out how to cut canola again eight inch double height on We'll just, uh, whew. good deal, here we go. 